I'm Tony Northup and I'm over here today. A lot of you asked about the video quality on the brand new Canon R5 and R6, how they compare to each other, how the different modes compare to each other, like is it better to do 4K30 or 4K60, but also how do they compare against the leading mirrorless hybrid cameras, the Sony a7 III and the Sony a7R IV. I'm gonna answer all those questions for you. First, let me ask you to subscribe. A lot of you also said, I wanna know what the still image quality is like. And Chelsea and I are working on a review of them for portraits and for sports, as well as like an in-depth still image quality review that goes into the dynamic range and higher ISO performance. That's coming soon. So subscribe and you'll get that. Also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Tony Northup, because I tend to uh, reveal findings as we find them before the videos are published. First, let's compare the different video modes of the Canon EOS R5 against themselves because there are some really interesting findings. First of all, the 8K from the R5 is the amazing. It's just the best video quality we've ever found, even in low light. You might think it would fall apart in low light conditions, but it's absolutely stunning all the way up to ISO 25,600. Note the banding that you see in the purple background lights is caused by their rapid flickering, which is normally invisible. This is a very common type of indoor light, especially for sports photographers. It's visible because I'm using a fast shutter speed to simulate low light conditions. Keep an eye on it as we compare the different cameras and you'll see some interesting results. The storage for the non-RAW for the regular UHD version is one gigabyte per minute, just to give you some estimate. And it overheats in about 15 to 20 minutes. But I want to add to that our experiences since our last overheating video, which we were out shooting wildlife, which might be intensive for the camera, like it's doing that cool animal IAF thing. But after an hour or so of shooting, I went to grab an 8K clip of a bird as a hybrid shooter would, switching from stills to video, and it limited me to two minutes of recording time because the camera was overheating. Like, as soon as I switched to video, it immediately said, overheating warning. We had not shot any video at all that day. We had just been shooting stills. It's only a single data point, but it turns out that shooting stills in the sun, at least, especially that sort of aggressive wildlife autofocus tracking thing, can build up enough heat to also limit your video recording. Let's talk about the 4K 30 high quality mode of the R5. If you're going to shoot in 4K, it needs to be in the 4K 30 mode because it's, it's great. It is almost as good as the 8K 30 if you crop it, like if you need to crop in 100%, but the 8K looks better when cropped still. The 4K 30 takes a little longer to overheat and it overheats in about 22 to 28 minutes. The R5 4K 30 is kind of garbage if you compare it against the 4K 30 high quality mode. You have to use the high quality mode if you really want usable 4K 30 footage. But the regular 4K 30 does not seem to overheat. I ran it for more than an hour and a half and it wasn't even hot, so it seems like it would just go on indefinitely. It does have a 30 minute software limit as all of the cameras we're talking about today have. So the R5, yes, you can shoot it in 4K 30 and it will be reliable, but the footage is not good. You have to use the high quality mode to get even decent footage out of it. And then it's, it overheats, it's unreliable. The 4K 60 and 120 are big selling points for me because it allows me to get either smooth footage or nice slow motion footage, which you can use to really dramatic effect. I love slowing down 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second. But the bad news is both of these are very mushy. My understanding is they use a line skipping technique, which means that it's basically using every other line from the 8K video and then squeezing that down to 8K. So it's throwing out like half of the video information and that's about what it looks like. It looks bad when you compare it against the 4K 30 high quality video. These modes also overheat a little bit longer, about 34 minutes, so you have to stop it and restart it but it does have these modes and that puts it at an advantage to some of the other cameras we'll talk about. So let's talk about the R5 versus the R6 because a lot of you are cross shopping these two cameras. The R6 is better than the R5 at standard 4K 30, noticeably better. 
I would not shoot the R5 in standard 4K30, but the R6 looks wonderful at both low ISO and high ISO. It is absolutely amazing in this mode. If you put the R5 into the 4K30 high quality mode that overheats, the, they are about the same. So 4K30 high quality R5 is the same as the standard 4K30 in the R6. The R6, however, overheats in about 39 minutes when shooting its standard 4K30, but it looks great. So maybe that's enough time for you. Whereas in the R5, if you put it into the equivalent high quality mode, then it overheats in 22 to 28 minutes. So in this particular scenario, comparable video quality, the R6 actually lasts much longer and maybe that 39 minutes is enough for you. If you switch to 4K60, the R6 is a much better video camera than the R5. The 4K60 video quality looks as good as we have seen. It's absolutely gorgeous. In this scenario, it will overheat in a little less than half an hour, whereas the R5 overheats in a longer period of time, about 34 minutes. But the R5 4K60 video is kind of garbage. So if you're like me and you want to shoot your videos in 4K60, the R6 is definitely the better choice. It's a less expensive camera and it produces higher quality video files. The R5 also shoots at 4K 120. The R6 cannot do that. So if you need that four times slow motion while staying in 4K, you can get that from the R5. But remember, that footage is very mushy. It would be pretty comparable to like an HD 120 footage that was scaled up. I'm going to take a second to plug some stuff, a sale that we have going on right now. You can get 25% off our number one photography book, Stunning Digital Photography. You can also get our Lightroom and Photoshop video books that each come with more than 14 hours of video training, or you can read the book. You can use practices. You can work along. It's the best way to improve your pictures is to improve your skills. We also have awesome t-shirts you can buy. Or if you want 50% off, upgrade to our top of the line art and science video training series, our professional portraits video training series. Those will help you actually make money with your gear. And we have amazing Lightroom presets that can improve your, especially your wildlife photos in just a couple of clicks. I call them the technical presets. Use the coupon code SUMMER50 at Northrop.photo for those. Now let's compare the Canon EOS R6 against the similar Sony a7 III. The R6 is a 20 megapixel camera. The Sony a7 III is a couple years old, but it's a 24 megapixel camera. And they're pretty close to the same price. They both have a little bit of crop when shooting 16 by 9 4K video, but the a7 III crops a little bit more. So you'll see that in the sample footage. When you look at 4K 30 video, at low ISOs, they're essentially indistinguishable. I would pick either one. At high ISOs, the R6 is actually much better. It has excellent low light performance. The R6 has many advantages over the a7 III. It shoots at 4K 60. The a7 III cannot do that. You would have to drop down to full HD to shoot 60 frames per second. The R6 also has DCI, which is the wider format video compared to the 16x9 you're watching now. The R6 has a flip forward screen, which is incredibly useful if you're ever going to be filming yourself. It also has a better touch interface for changing settings using the touch screen, and it has vastly better video AF than the Sony camera. I cannot stand the continuous autofocus on the Sony cameras, so I pretty much end up just using manual autofocus on those cameras because it just, it like hunts in and out and it's ruined too many shots for me. The a7 Mark III does have a few advantages. It's $700 less expensive, new, they go for about $1,800, and it will record video to two SD cards, but it only does the 4K 30. Now let's compare the Canon EOS R5 against the Sony a7R4. Like maybe you're looking for a high megapixel mirrorless camera. The R5 is 45 megapixels, the Sony a7R4 is 60 megapixels, and they also shoot video. These are like the ultimate hybrid cameras. The Sony a7R4 is my just personal day-to-day -day business professional camera. Landscapes, portraits, sports, it kind of does everything. So can the R5 match that for video capabilities? First, I want to note the R5 has a little bit more of a crop than the A7R Mark IV. The A7R Mark IV seems to be full width, whereas the R5 needs to crop for 16 by 9 video. The 8K footage from the R5, like I said, nothing beats it. It is sharp. It is absolutely gorgeous. So it's also better than the 4K output from the A7R Mark IV. If you compare 
the R5's 4K at 30 frames per second high quality video, it is better than the A7R Mark IV, especially at higher ISO. So if you don't mind those shorter overheating times, go with the 4K 30HQ from the R5. The R5 has some other pros besides better video quality. It supports 4K 60 and 4K 120, albeit with poor video quality. It also has that DCI format. It has a flip forward screen, a better touch system, and better, more usable video AF. The A7R 4 has a few advantages. It's a less expensive camera, $3,200 compared to $3,900, and it records video to two SD cards. So they each do a pretty good job. You could be happy with either, but as far as video goes, the R5 is definitely the more powerful camera. This pretty much wraps it up. We have more reviews coming soon, so be sure to subscribe to see those. We're covering the actual still image quality really, really soon. I promise we're gonna move on from video, but I want to remind you, go to northrop.photo where you can get 25% off all of our video books and t-shirts using the coupon code SUMMER25. Or if you want our high-end, advanced, more in-depth than we could possibly go in YouTube video training, the art and science, the professional portraits, use the coupon code SUMMER50 and you get a full 50% off because those are higher priced items. We also have presets for Lightroom and Lightroom Classic that you can use that will make your pictures so much better in just a few clicks. And all this comes with a money back guarantee. So check it out at northrop.photo, coupon code SUMMER50. Thanks and bye.